Welcome back to Instant Replay Live. We're following a dwarf in the swamp. A beardless dwarf who's a little too tall for dwarfism. Yeah, okay, I can hear that. Like, I just think... a bit. Just a bit. Not overly. The hunt is my mistress. But just a bit. He feels like a dwarf, though, in character. And that's... Yeah? Yeah, that's what I like about him. He's got a very just boisterous, you know, like... Yeah. Go get him, kick explosives into the cave personality. Well, yeah, right at you. <laughs> yeah. And then the cave is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. Done that conversation. Did we? Yeah. On the episode where Did it happened. Did we actually experience it happen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going up. That one over there looks quite aggressive. Nice. It's okay. a dire caragor. Don't even try creeping up on it. Just basically plug it with arrows a few times. Actually, you don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that you anymore? Do the, uh, the, the shot. Oh, oh, this is the one where you have to do this. Okay. Whoa. You can... Oh, counter a caragor's leap. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then right button. Well, you, it's a little tricky, though. you got to get them to run at you. You can't just, like, let it's them It's like, tricky to you. Oh, there you go. run at Karagors. Oh, what was I supposed to do? Yeah. So you need to get it chasing you on a long path. There we go. There we go. I've got it. I got it. <laughs> I swear I've got it. That, that event is good because it always feels like... In gameplay, I'm like, oh god, am I gonna make it? Am I gonna hit that thing? You know? Right. How does he tame them if he doesn't have wraith powers? He's just an awesome guy. <laughs> it's it's a pretty bad disconnect from the actual gameplay, like yeah. the gameplay that had a story feel, and now it's like what? <laughs> also, his Karagor looks way cooler. He's got dire Karagor. What? I know, right? That's not it's like a fair. pygmy dire Karagor. It's yeah, not big. it's tiny. I mean, it's the same size as mine. It just has horns. See, he's got a horny character, is what you mean. Uh, jokes. Man. I had this friend in uh, fifth grade who always said, I'm the last of the horny toads. I'm a very horny toad. Ew. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> and that's my story about the guy from fifth grade. You said that. <laughs> that's a good story. Thanks. Because now I hate that guy. <laughs> we all did too, and... Oh, oh man. Okay, so I can segue this into a pretty crazy thing. I mean, I you conveyed tell. everything about his personality that I need to know. Well, so like he was, you know, the kind of kid that that no one liked in school. Like, I, I was actually pretty cool. I, I got to know him because I ended up like getting a ride home with him one day. And oh yeah. Like, uh, even though he, he like no one hung out with him, everyone judged him a little harshly. I went home and like yeah, I mean, that's he played, usually the way. You know, he played like the same computer games as me, and I was just like, whoa, we're like, we're people like that know each other. Um, and I like I ended up like that was my last year at Wear Academy, and so I didn't really talk to him again much after that. But it was like I feel I felt so bad for you know just not I was never mean to him, but not getting to know him or not get getting that. a chance to get to know him. Yeah, um, that's pretty nice to say. And then you trash talk him on the internet ten years later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was just a stupid thing he said as a kid, you know, um, because all kids say stupid things. But um, later on, this this is a uh, when I when I came to Georgia in eighth grade. Um, oh. Wait a minute. You gotta protect your. Oh. Yeah, you gotta get him to heal. Um. <sighs> I don't have a good sense of my character's health. Okay, go on. Anyways, I uh, came to Georgia in eighth grade and uh, made some friends. And there's one kid who, again, it was kind of the same situation as this kid from uh, middle school. Um, and he, he was a little bit like aloof and didn't really have a lot of friends. And I kind of found my own clique and I just. Uh, never really hung out with him, but he got bullied constantly, and it was one of those things where I always felt like bullying wasn't real, because it never happened to me, or at, at that point in my life. The only time I really got bullied was at church, for that one kid who spat candy in my hair. Mm, but at school, kid, it was... Huh? <laughs> we haven't talked about him recently. Um, well, we did. We talked about him. I'm joking. Um, anyways, <laughs> but at school, I didn't really think of bullying as being an honest-to-goodness thing. Um, oh, yeah? But this kid was really, really bullied, and, uh, and like... Uh, I, I had some classes in 8th grade, but didn't really see him much over tenth, over ninth and 10th grade. And one day, in 10th grade, um, we were all in like the theater having like a, some guest speaker come in. And we had an announcement come over the overhead. And it, our, our secretary up front was like speaking in like a tears in her voice. Like, um, everybody needs to go to uh, some room. I can't remember what room they put us in. Oh, yeah? But, um, someone has brought a bomb to the school. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and it was this kid. And uh, so we get we got separated. They brought all of us. We got bussed out to another Holy place, shit, to a, to a rec center. And, um, Wait, did I miss a part in the story? Was this the... 
this is the kid who, who got bullied. And I'm going to tell a little bit more about him because it, it's crazy how much this kid went through that I didn't know about. Because um, he otherwise, you know, seemed like a functional person. But um, So we get separated from, from the school. They took us out. We, we oh, took no, a couple hours. Um, the GBI, the government, the G Georgia Bureau of Investigation came down Holy to talk shit, the kid man. down to get the bomb. Turns out he had made, like, a shrapnel bomb. Holy uh, with, like, shit, nails this and is stuff. real? Yeah, and it, it was not never a bomb that was going to really... Like, like, it would have damaged the school, but, yeah, but yeah, it could, it could have, have killed him, someone. could have hurt anybody around him. Um, Holy fuck. Yeah, and um, so we, we got separated, though. We, the, the bomb was taken away. It was disarmed. Um, I found out later that his parents had abandoned him and his siblings. Whoa. He had a younger sister and I believe a younger brother that he was taking care of. And he reached out to some sort of child support system, but they didn't like they didn't answer him back. Um, and he like, like he was getting rejected from trying to reach out for help. Um, that is insane. Yeah. So uh, they had just cut off power in his house and the house that he was living in. Um, and he was just and he was being bullied in school. Like this, it was just awful. And um, he ended up not going to jail, but going to you know um, psychiatric care. Well, that's um, good at least. And but holy crap, man! Yeah. I I never knew this. Yeah, it was, um, man, it was intense. How did you never tell me about this? That's a very good question. I don't know. I mean, it was in tenth grade that it happened, and uh, like yeah. we weren't talking that much back then. That's true. Um, and mom freaked out, of course. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, she's a panicker anyway. Right? Like. Yeah. I, I, I remember walking down the road one day and mom freaked out and uh, almost called the cops just because I, I wasn't at home. <laughs> she was like, thought I had gone missing. Um, but, uh... <laughs> okay. To try to pick up a happier note of, of a little bit of a funny story because holy shit, man. Yeah. That's insane. I can't believe you, like, lived through that as a real experience. I mean, I had... I was going to say before you got, like, real heavy with it that I had bullies all the time growing up. Like, mm -hmm. very real experiences with bullies. But, um, th that got all serious. Uh, on, on the topic of mom being paranoid, though, one day I went outside and there was frost, like a thick frost on the car windows, and I was getting picked up by grandma to be taken to school, and, uh, it was mom's, like, purple minivan. Yeah. And, uh, Gosh, I just... Caravan. Yeah, yeah. I just wrote on the window in the frost... I'm watching you. I remember that with eyes. <laughs> yes. And then I just went to school and I didn't think about it. But mom freaked the <laughs> shit out. Yes. Oh, do I, I apparently, remember like, that? Apparently like ruined her day. Because you know that I was riding with mom to school. Uh. So when we went out to go to the car, <laughs> mom screamed. As she got to her door. It's like reaching for the handle, jumped away. Oh my god! <laughs> Ran inside the house. Oh Did it my die gosh. again? No, your target escaped. Fuck. How um, much am I gonna have to replay? Not much. You're okay, not much. All right. How are we doing on episode time? Um, uh, pretty good. You got okay. Okay. I'm in thirty seconds. Beat it. Okay, I'm gonna try. Man, though, that <laughs> like I totally like didn't even think about it. Like I just went to school. Like whatever. I did the thing. Yes. It's done. <laughs> And uh, she apparently got, like, really serious about it. Like, she was not happy. So. Yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, I, you know what, though? Like, I don't, I never wanted to terrorize her. That was never no, my plan. No, no, I mean, yeah, it was just not, like. But I would never take it back, either. <laughs> like, now that it's done... It needs to have happened. I like, got to a point where I actually got not like confrontational, but like I would like challenge mom's paranoia. I was like, come on, like yeah. this the, the amount of like fear you have, like she would wake up so much in the middle of the night and just be like, is the door locked? Are we like, like yeah. I don't, I, I guess that's not like abnormal. Yeah, like she, it wasn't like every night kind of thing, but like often enough that it was like a, a thing that we associate as a character trait with her. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, I always make sure the doors are locked here, because this is a neighborhood where yeah. something could happen, but doors not likely. Be locked, yeah. But the the fear of a sound being an intruder breaking in. Um, yeah. You should you should be aware when big sounds happen. I don't know. I, I'm a much more casual person. I'm not a person who gets um, well, worried like, about things, even but, even in cases where maybe I should. 
you saying a big sound like making you aware like well, you like, don't want to be aware when it's too late though you want to stop it from getting that sure. far so i keep the door locked i have an alarm system um nothing has ever happened to us personally but this house was broken into right before we moved into it mm. so it you know it put me on edge and it freaked me out um i've got a little bit of that i guess but not to the degree she had right. has yeah so weird stuff anyways let's uh see this cutscene and then we'll, i think we'll probably check out and go to the next sure one thing I will say is, anytime you don't call her for a few days, like, I'll go, like, a year <laughs> without calling Mom. <laughs> yeah. But you don't call her for... Is he dead? Two days, and it's, yeah, immediate, like, tell Joseph to call me. I haven't heard from him. I'm so worried. I don't understand. <laughs> like, you're her baby, man. It's yeah. always been different with you. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just the way that is. All right, next time on Instant Replay Live, less talking about our mom. Maybe. I don't know. We got mom stories, right? We do. <laughs> All right, next episode. You really kick it. Kick Yo, it. plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.